So I had to take a plea bargain. So I went to prison for four years and two months with good time. I was 43 when that happened, and I had never been arrested before, never had any kind of prior offenses whatsoever. Five years before I was arrested, my life was very busy. I had my child living with me, and I was running my own business. This was my son and I in Las Vegas. My son has always been with me. He's, uh, my pride and joy. Before I started actually doing the physical transitioning, instead of just dumping something like this on him, what I did was whenever we played a video game together, I would always choose the girl part in the game. By doing this, he actually got the idea that I wanted to be a girl. So when I, I actually broke it to him, it wasn't a big surprise to him. He looked at me and he says, I always knew you wanted to be a girl. I just didn't know you were going to go through with it. I got out on, on February 16th of prison. And uh, today is April 15th. When I came out, I didn't have a home to come to until Patty invited me into hers. She's just been a friend like nobody else has ever been. We're not a couple. I'm not in love with her. She's not in love with me. But we're friends. And I've done everything within my power to help her as a friend. And we have ugly lights. Do you want to do the ceiling fan? I do home repairs, property maintenance, deliveries. Like I said, it's all one step at a time. Just about everything and anything I can do to make a dollar. <laughs> so I stay relatively busy, and I try to keep work for her. We have to start with that room because yeah, the furniture, the furniture is going to come in maybe a week. So we have to do that first. Were you still wanting to do something with the walls in there besides just plain green, the green nature? All my life, I felt feminine. Okay. I never felt like I belonged to the male gender. I've always felt female inside. The drive inside of me to complete is so strong that you think about maybe operating on yourself. I've always felt like it didn't belong to me to begin with, and it's almost to a point where just getting rid of it would just be fine, no matter what. I was adopted from Switzerland by Presbyterian missionaries. I think I was about three years of age. I can remember going to sleep at night and when I was lying down saying my prayers. I would say, dear God, when I wake up, that thing down there will not be there. I will look like Susie across the street. And so right then and there, I knew I was different from other little boys. And I worked drilling rigs from 77 till 1983. I was still in the closet. I was still employable. I had the oil field experience and whatnot. I could go out, I'd get a job, no problem. I officially came out of the closet in 1991. For a real very short time there, I carried two IDs. I would go to work with one ID, my old male name, and then when I was off tower, off duty, whatnot, I, was, I carried my real ID. And that worked for a little while, but then I just couldn't, I couldn't stand myself that way. And I went to live in full time as Linda. And fuck you if you didn't like it, you know? Every time I went down and tried to get a job for something I knew how to do, I had to show ID and whatnot. And they'd say, oh, Linda Patricia Thompson, but you're a guy. So oh, we can't be having that around here. I says, I know how to do this work. I've got experience doing the work. Oh, we can't have it, you know? Somebody taught me how to ride freight trains. And I went to riding freight trains.
By that time, I was heavily into a bottle. So I could drink when I wanted to. I'd go on a bender as long as I wanted to. There was no responsibility. I mean, I wore a dress on the rails. I didn't wear no heels on the rails because railroad gravel and heels don't mix. But I wore a dress. I'd wear makeup. I had my falsies on. I, had, I wore double F falsies. And uh, yeah, I had a good old time. I went to steal them. And that's how I supported it. That's how I bought my groceries, that's how I bought my pantyhose, whatever. I went to prison for stealing aluminum wire. I was selling it for scrap because nobody would give me a job because my name is Linda Patricia Thompson. What am I supposed to do to survive? I can't work. I'm not allowed in a shelter. I'm not allowed in a rescue mission. Hello? Yes, it's wrong. No, I shouldn't have done it, but oh well. I'm not going to lie about who and what I am. All right, this is the uh, sentencing of Daniel Valentin on indictment 03-07-773. My involvement with Yolanda took place in either October or November of 2003, which was almost a year and a half after she had uh, been in jail. Daniel indicated that uh, he, he ran or he attempted to escape because he wanted to get away from all of the problems. I was asked by the Sylvia Rivera Project to represent her. She had been bounced around from a attorney to attorney and really nothing was getting done. I mean, she had been in for, you know, at that point, 16 or 17 months without any activity in the court. It, it was getting old. Daniel is a uh, pre-surgical transgender individual who obviously has had some problems over the years. I understand the issues with Daniel Valentine and his, his challenges, but there are many people that have challenges in our society. That challenge does not entitle him or give him any special luxury or understanding when it comes to committing a crime or trying to escape from my officer. Mr. Valentin, anything that you wanted to say? Well, basically, I would just apologize for any trauma that I've caused, you know, officer injuring himself. And um, I just want to take my life to a better state from this point and be a positive person for society. His legal name is Daniel, and his... You know, his legal gender right now, if you will, is male, and yet everything about Yolanda is female. So the question becomes, what does the jail do? There are more and more people with this problem today than ever before. At least we see it more. Adjustments should be made at the, the institution, at the correctional institution, for anyone with that kind of an issue. There's no question about that. They should not be in a general population. The downside of protective custody is that, you know, you're locked down in, in, in a room for 23 and a half hours a day. It's a type of punishment up on top of a punishment just because you're transsexual. Oh, God, okay, the county, I sat there for almost a year in 24-hour lockdown. It's just like a room, just a room. You don't have anything in there but your bed, your window that you can't even open, so you don't even get air. You feel like an animal. Then the room that's in, like, it's a big window so everyone can see you. It was uh, entertainment for them to see this person in this room going crazy. You know, no one, everyone was laughing or was walking by, ha, 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 look at the fag, blah, 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 look at the homo. It really feels like you're in a mental hospital. It really does. Mm -hmm. 